we're going to cover two other kinds of transformations today, and these transformations are shifts. So moving things left to right and up or down. And then we'll put all those together. And again, we're focusing on sine and cosine today. Um, Tuesday, sorry, Monday when we were going to have our quiz, but now the quiz is going to be Tuesday. Okay, quiz on sine, graphing, graphing sine and cosine. Um, Monday we'll probably look at tangent and maybe cotangent as well. I forget if I do secant and cosecant first. Anyway, That's we're going to eventually get what's that? It's not on the quiz. So that won't be on the quiz, right? The stuff we learned on Monday will not be on the quiz. So this, though, up to this point, up to today, is fair game for the quiz, though. Okay. So let's talk about horizontal shifts. Okay. Now you hopefully remember from like our previous talk about transformations and things about how we do a horizontal shift, right? When we want to shift a graph horizontally, all right? Well, again, we know that the A in front, that's the amplitude. We already talked about that. Let's talk about sine here for the first one. What do we do? In order to shift something left or right, how do we how do we adjust the function to shift it left or right? What do we do, Ro? With 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 what variable? With the x, exactly right. Okay, so remember that the b x, right? That b x that results in the stretch or shrink of the period. But then yes, the minus c or plus or minus c, you could really say there. That is what's going to shift things right or left. Exactly right. Yep, and, and the same thing will apply here. Exactly right. Okay, so it's again kind of true across all these functions that we've seen here, right? Okay, so again, A was the amplitude. That's that's the vertical stretch or shrink. B is the period stretch or shrink, horizontal stretch or shrink, and then minus C is going to then shift things left or right. <clears throat> so how do we account for this? How do we take care of it? The same way we did with the period stretch or shrink. So in, in 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 essence here, we're going to take care of, right? We're going to account for both the period stretch or shrink and the a horizontal shift left or right simultaneously by using that simple compound inequality, okay, of <clears throat> taking our transformation there and putting it between zero and two pi. Again, because zero and two pi is like the normal, quote unquote, normal kind of period <clears throat> for sine. And then we'll see how it transforms things. So you would, you know, dot dot dot, you'd solve for x kind of thing. Okay, and get, you know, that would be your new period. <clears throat> Starting point and stopping point. <clears throat> All right, so let's see this happen here. So let's do y equals the cosine of x minus pi over 3. So we'll do an example here. <clears throat> okay, y equals cosine of quantity x minus pi over 3. So Using what Rose said, right? Is this going to be a horizontal shift? Yes. yes. How much and which direction? Right by pi over 3. Yeah, exactly. We're going to shift everything right, pi over 3 radians, right? <clears throat> so we'll take our little, you know, um, what's inside the parentheses there, our shift. And I'll go ahead and just, you know, show that, oops, to you. So we'll put it between the 0 and the 2 pi, our normal period, right? our kind of standard period for the parent function there. And then we'll add pi over 3 to all sides there. And so we get the new starting point for our period will be pi over 3. And then 2 pi plus pi over 3, well, let's see here. 2 pi is really 6 pi over 3, plus a pi over 3 will now go out to 7 pi over 3. <coughs> okay. So this is kind of like our new starting point and stopping point for our period. What is the length of the period, though? What's the period length? It's still 2 pi, right? Which should make sense because did we have a coefficient here in front of the x, right? There's no coefficient. So that didn't stretch or shrink our period at all. We're still repeating every 2 pi here, but the problem is that even though we're repeating every 2 pi, it's just shifted everything right pi over 3. So instead of starting at 0, we start at pi over 3. And instead of ending at 2 pi, we end at 7 pi over 3. Okay? What's the amplitude for this graph going to be? One. one, right? Just one. Okay? So again, characteristics we want to be able to identify. Okay? And again, we could identify the domain here. The domain would, of course, still be all real numbers, right? The range 
negative one to one because our amplitude didn't change, stuff like that. Okay, characteristics we still want to be able to evaluate or identify here. <clears throat> but more importantly, let's take a look at this sketch. So how do we go about sketching it? Well, again, with your y-axis, knowing our amplitude is one, we only have to go up one and down one from the x-axis there. And I guess I'll do two full periods here. So I put zero there, right? Because that's where the y-axis intersects the x-axis and stuff. But we're going to have to kind of move things over some. And I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit here and say, okay, I'm going to say there's pi over three. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of go out an arbitrary distance here to maybe like, I don't know, here or something and say, okay, there is seven pi over three. Now with these shifts, we can kind of end up like with a weird scale sometimes or something like that. I mean, uh, like this, this, this distance might not be the same as the individual distances here and stuff, but you know, I'm, o I'm okay with that, I think, okay? It makes it a little bit trickier to figure it out, the rest of it. We can, but yeah, it's more work that I think we need to worry about, okay? So, um, pi over three to seven pi over three, and then we'll go out another two pi here, because I want to go, again, two full periods here. So again, we said the distance of the period was 2 pi, so let's go out another 2 pi, which is really going out 6 pi over 3, so we'll be at seven or 13 pi over 3 here. And I'll guess two full periods there. <clears throat> and now we have to do some like arithmetic to figure out our other points, because remember that once you find that period, you want to find the midpoint and then the quarter points as well. So to find the midpoint, right, just add these two endpoints. So pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 3 is 8 pi over 3, right? Then divide by 2. 8 pi over 3 divided by 2, 4 pi over 3. All right, we do the same thing here for this other interval. Again, the midpoint of this one, 7 pi over 3 plus 13 pi over 3 is 20 pi over 3. Divided by 2 would be 10 pi over 3. And then I want to find the quarter points, which is really just the midpoint of the midpoint. Oh, they're here? Okay. Chrissy, you want to go help? Jenna? Sure, <laughs> I know, those chairs are the worst. Great, great design. Okay, so then we'll do the quarter points as well. So again, just add them up. Pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 divided by 2, 5 pi over 6. Okay, and then we get 11 pi over 6. We get 17 pi over 6. And then we get 23 pi over 6. Okay, again, just adding up, dividing by 2. So now, okay, we're going to um, start graphing here. So what you could do if you really wanted to, if you're like unsure about things, you could just start with pi over three, plug pi over three in here. Again, start with the, the number that we, our new period starts with here. Plug in the pi over three, pi over three minus pi over three, zero. What's cosine of zero? One, so we have one, okay? Plug in five pi over six. Now this one's a little bit trickier, right? But five pi over six minus pi over three, remember pi over three is two pi over six. So 5 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. But what's 3 pi over 6 simplified to be? Pi over 2. What's cosine of pi over 2? 0. Right? And then guess what cosine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be? All right, it's going to be negative 1. You get the pattern, right? Eventually, you can kind of see the pattern. Okay, so we're, cosine starts off the axis, then on the axis, then below it, then back on, then off on the axis, off the axis, and you can just kind of continue the pattern there if you want to. And if you don't believe me, you can do the arithmetic here with all these values, but again, why torture yourself when we just can see the pattern here, right? And of course it keeps going, right? <clears throat> okay, 
And so there it is over two full periods. All right. There's your two full periods. One, two. Get our wave. Okay. Questions on any of that? <clears throat> Alright, how do you guys try one then? Here, you guys try y equals sine of x plus pi over 2. <coughs> okay. So, how do you do sine of x plus pi over 2? So again, take that, what's in the parentheses there, take that and put it between the 0 and the p normal pi over 2. I mean, sorry, 2 pi. Put it between the normal 0 and 2 pi period there. Solve for x, and that'll be your new period. And again, let's do two full periods there. Thank you. 
two three powers two. Well, so from zero to three power two, that's a distance of three power two, and then from negative power two to zero is a distance of power two. So my point is, from here to here, that's a distance of actually two pi. Do you see it? If I take two pi, if I add two pi to this, I'm going to end up with this. So this this distance between these two is two pi. So it means that the length of your period, this this particular graph, repeats every two pi. So that means you want to add two pi onto your endpoint there to get your next. Zero is zero. Cosine is zero. So just plug a point there. Hey, boom. Voila. And then zero, plug in zero. Zero plus pi over two is pi over two. What is sine of pi over two? That's okay. So think about it and then plug it from there. Okay? So pi over two is on like the top part of your x at, or mm -hmm, top part of your unit circle there. So sine of sine is y, cosine is x. <coughs> yeah, that's the one. So what is the distance from here to here? What does that say? Well, so from here to here is a pi over two, another pi over two, another pi over two, another pi over two, so it's four pi over two, which is the same thing as two pi. So then you want to go at another two pi, and that'll give you the other end point, okay? You can find your length of your period, and then just add it on to the end point. That'll get you to the next. plus 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is really the same thing as 2 pi, and then divide by 2, which is just then what? Pi. Pi is your answer. Okay, yeah. All right, so you should end up with something that looks like this, okay, for two full periods there, okay? Starting at negative pi over 2, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi, 7 pi over 2. Now I didn't quite make my x-axis long enough, that's why you see that extension right there. All right, amplitude is one. Okay. Um, remember that again, right, from negative pi over two to three pi over two, that's a distance still, the distance is still two pi, right? We've, we've, we've not shrunk the period or stretched the period at all. It's still a distance of two pi. So add two pi onto this endpoint of three pi over two, you end up with seven pi over two. That's your next endpoint. Okay. What is this a graph of? It's sine, but it's also a graph I mean, of it's cosine. cosine. It's cosine. Yeah, it's cosine. Okay, that is cosine, right? And take, take away this piece right here. There's cosine, right? Yeah. Only with that piece. With that piece, it's still cosine, right? But it's maybe easier to see if we start with like how we started the other ones. So good. Yeah, job. it's cosine. Okay, so there it is. All right. Um, I don't know about you, but the shrimp smells delicious. So if, if y'all want to go over and grab some, my recommendation, probably the best way to go about this, because it's kind of in like some liquid here, is to grab yourself a plate, grab yourself a fork, and then just kind of like uh, harpoon yourself a shrimp, <laughs> all right? And then uh, take it back to your desk or something like that. And let's just start with one shrimp per person for right now, so that way, um, you know, we can, uh, we can make sure everyone gets some. Stuff like that. So if you want to go over and go ahead and grab some, you go ahead, okay? So go ahead, get up and make your move. I know, right? Go ahead, go ahead, grab yourself a shrimp. It smells delicious. <laughs> Oh, I will. I'll get some. Thank you. I will get some. I want to make sure everyone else gets some first. Sure I counted you in the list, so you can have one. You, can have one. you count, Simeon. You matter. <laughs> Whenever it locked over, if you by, we were like, we had one last night when you came over to me with like, hey, you're going to get shrimp. Gotcha.
Gotcha. You can, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's very crunchy. Yeah, it's, it's very pungent. I think it's the garlic. Everyone, everyone you're all gonna have garlic breath now for the rest of the day. That's okay though, it's gonna taste delicious. There you go, it's just make it even better, yeah. Okay, so the last, the last anyone else want some shrimp? All right, Simeon, you're up, buddy. You can have some. Me too. I'm gonna grab myself some here, real quick. Anyone who's been for a whole life but you can get another one? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm back. Someone talk to Caitlin. How to describe it? It's fine. We'll figure it out. It's fine. It's not very difficult. You can kind of like, yeah, yeah. You can kind of bite it and just pull it off when you're biting into it. They are these. Could uh, you don't have to? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, how do you get that out? Just bang it. You butterfly the shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do bang it. You can just eat it. I mean, people people do, but you don't have to. Just trying to think about what you're eating, but. Yes, just don't think about it. Yep. Oh, uh, some eggs with the shrimp with flies. You add them up, divide them by two, and then divide them by two again. Right. What do you do when you find the quarter points? Add them up, divide by two. Add up the two end points, divide by two. Nope. Not, not good? Um, well, you tried. Oof, now my, now my trash can's going to smell like seafood. I will have to get rid of that trash. <laughs> No, but seafood eventually does not smell good. Um, anyway, that's fine. Um, all right. The last transformation for which we are going to be responsible here, vertical shift. Vertical shift. Shifting things up or down. We have plenty of time. Yes, we will. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. We might, we might have to wait till Monday to do it. We'll see. Okay, question. Yes, he's gone now. Yes. So, because, so we had the snow, his last day was supposed to be last Friday, but then because we had the snow day and then we had the delay, his dad just thought it would be like fine just to like not come into school on the last day. So, I didn't, we didn't get to say goodbye. But his, uh, he left his book in my, in my uh, mailbox, so I have his book somewhere. I forget where I put it. I put it in the thing. So. Texas, Texas, oh, wow. with his to live with his mom. So, Wait, did he give you your book back? no, he did, he did, he did. He gave the book back. <laughs> my point is, I didn't get to see him for that. You know, he just his dad like dropped in my mailbox. I'm like, that was it, kind of thing. So there was no, there was no. Oh, you smart thinking, Simeon. You knew, Simeon knew. All right. So anyway, um. This plus four, this plus four here, we can tell is on the outside of the sign function. Why? Because there's no parentheses, okay? Um, if you, ha you have to have parentheses around it in order for it to be inside there, right? So the plus four is on the outside. Don't get that confused, all right? What would the amplitude of this graph be? One still, right? Because the lead coefficient is one. So the height from the center of our wave and the, or the height from the center and the depth from the center is still going to be a distance of one. So it will still be one away, okay? But we're shifting everything up four. So that means the center of our wave, which normally is on the x-axis, is going to be shifted up four. So now, with the center of our wave at four, what's going to be the highest y value we, we, we get to? Five, right? And what's the lowest y value we're going to get to? Three. We're going to, our center of our wave is at four. We're going to go up one from it to five. We'll go down run from it to three, OK? So when I go to draw my axes here, OK? When I go to draw my axes, I want to make sure that I get to three, four, and five on the y-axis. And that's all I need. So in other words, I can put my x-axis down a little bit lower than I normally would, because I'm not going to hit any negative y values. OK? So we'll just say there's one. Two, three, four, and five. Okay. A recommendation that I'm going to give to you—you you don't have to do this, but I think I, I just find it helpful. 
is instead of, um, well, since again, we're shifting everything up four, so let's, let's just go ahead and draw in like a dotted line here for where kind of like the new center of our wave is gonna be. Okay, so this is like our new x-axis you can kind of think of it as. Okay, our wave is gonna be centered about that line. And this is helpful for a guideline for your eyes and stuff like that to see how your wave's gonna be centered there. Okay, um, so there's no period stretch or shrink or shift. So we're still just gonna go from zero to two pi. So that's pretty straightforward. And I'll go ahead and do two full periods here just to keep it the typical way we've been doing things. Uh, three pi, and then five pi over two, and then seven pi over two. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so again, we'll start with zero, right? Because zero is where our period starts here. Again, we didn't shift it left or right or stretch or shrink it at all. So we'll plug in zero. What is the sign of zero? Zero plus four. Four, okay? So our first point is gonna be four. Zero comma four, okay? And then you can plug in pi over two. Sign of pi over two is one plus four, <coughs> five. So at pi over two, we're really at five, okay? And then what's the sign of pi? Zero plus four, four, right? Okay, you can kind of see this graph starting to take shape, but let's do three pi over two. What's the sign of three pi over two? Negative one, but plus four, three. So the final value there at y value is three, okay? And so at two pi, we're gonna go back to the axis, right? And then five pi over two will go above the axis. Three pi back on the axis, seven pi over two, one below, and then four pi back on. And so we create our little wave there. Okay, and so there's our wave transform. <coughs> there's our wave transform. Okay, so let's try combining things. Let's try combining things here. Okay. Putting it all together. All together now. <clears throat> Sorry, that's a typo right there. Putting it all together. So, how should we do that? So again, here are some tips for you. My recommendation, find the vertical shift. Okay, and think of that as like your new x-axis, okay, for that vertical shift, the new x-axis, okay? Second, I suggest you find the period using um, the zero less than or equal to bx minus c less than two pi, right? So whatever the bx minus c is, put that between zero and two pi and solve it for x, okay? Plot the start, middle, quarter, points, and end of the period. And then finally, number four, use the amplitude to plot the other points. And by that, I mean the points are both above and below that new axis, right? Your amplitude is going to tell you how far above to go your axis and how far below to go your new axis, right? <coughs> All right, and here's the example, and I'm, I'm, I'll slow down here, but I just want to get the example written up too, just for you to ponder. Y equals three sine of two X plus two. <clears throat> okay, now this doesn't quite have everything in it. It doesn't have a horizontal shift left or right. 
Right. So yeah, what would be in the parent? What is inside the sign here? Two x. Okay. So the two x doesn't need parentheses around it because it's considered one whole term. Right. It's just a product here. Two x. But the plus two is that inside the sign? No. no. Once you have add a second term in there, then you would need parentheses, okay? So when you have a monomial, right, that is all considered inside the sign function there. Two x is a monomial, right? But then you'd consider the, the plus two, that's no longer, that's a new term, so that's now outside the sign, okay? So yes, technically we can add parentheses in there if you want to, just to make it more clear for yourself. Okay, so let's tackle this here. What is the, um, well, we kind of are, all right, whatever. Let's do the vertical shift. So what's what's our vertical shift going to be here? We're going to be shifted up two, right? Okay. So right away you can see that we're going to be you know moving things up two. But then also, what's our amplitude here? Amplitude is three. So we're going to go up three and down three from that um, shift up two. Okay. Our period. Well, we'll get to that in a second here. What the period length is. Let's go ahead and take that 2x, and we'll put it between the 0 and the 2 pi, our normal sign, period, right? <clears throat> and what do we need to do here to solve for x? Divide by 2, right? So we get 0 less than or equal to x less than pi. So now our period is just pi in length, right? And so when we say the period up here, we can say it's just pi. So it repeats every pi. This graph repeats every pi as opposed to every 2 pi. <clears throat> okay. So we'll go ahead and get started here on setting up our graph. Since we're shifting everything up to, I'm going to kind of shift my x-axis down some. However, with shifting everything up to, we still have an amplitude of 3. What's the highest y value we're going to see here? If we have an amplitude of 3 and then we're shifting everything up to? 5. 5, exactly right. Our center is at 2. We're going to go up 3 from that to 5. And then what's our lowest we're going to get to? We're going to go down 3 from the 2, so negative 1. So we still need to have some negative okay, on our x or y axis there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. And again, I'm going to draw that new center line at the 3. Okay. And our new period here is from 0 to pi. And I'm going to go, again, I'll do 2. So 0 to pi, and then be pi to 2 pi would be the second full period. And I'll get the halfway point and the quarter points there. And again, to find these quarter points, just add up the two endpoints of your interval there and divide by 2. Same idea. We have our first full period there from 0 to pi, and then our next full period from pi to 2 pi. Okay. And again, if you want to plug in 0, right? Start with plugging in 0. 0 times 2 is 0. All right? What is the sign of 0? Zero? 0. Times 3, still 0, plus 2, 2. Oh, shoot. I put my center at the wrong place. Doggone it. Mr. Wid. Hang on, I can fix it. Yes. Although, are you are you guys allowed to have whiteout in school technically? Yeah. You are. Okay. I don't know if it was against the rules or not. Yes, the huffing stuff. The tape? Yeah. Yes, I have seen that. I just didn't know if it was still illegal or not. Anyway, we got to keep rolling here because I'm almost running out of time. So anyway, it's 2. Okay, plug in pi over 4. Pi over 4 times 2 is pi over 2. Sign of pi over 2 is 1. Times 3 is 3. Plus 2 is 5. So pi over 4, we're at 5. Okay, pi over 2, we're back at the axis. 3 pi over 4, we're going to be at negative 1. Pi, back at the axis. 5 pi over 4, above. 3 pi over 2, back on the axis. 7 pi over 4, at negative 1 and then 2 pi back on the axis. And oh so, 
we finished. Okay, your homework will be posted to Google Classroom. Yes, I'm going to give you some practice with this. Okay, we'll do probably some more on um, Monday and then quiz Tuesday. So I'm even more happy that I didn't make you guys do the, or I'm not going to have you guys do the quiz on Tuesday. Monday, I mean. Okay, anyone wants any more shrimp? It's over there. It's delish. I'll take another one. But thank you. So then they served us. They served us over like. Rice, I'm guessing, or something. Well, at this, at this place, they serve it over rice or something. I'm guessing. Well, that's very good. Mmm. That one was still warm. Thank you, Jenna. From the shrimp? Um, I knew it was a bad idea. That's okay. You can shout it out. You're welcome. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Good things, Thank you.
is uh, some sort of shrimp with honey, garlic, white wine, and turmeric, and maybe some like basil. I'm guessing. Who made it? Too, so. uh, no one made it. They bought it. Um, it, was, it was for a, a late um, um, submission for their population project. It's from the India Six restaurant that's near like the Burger King and the Walmart. Bucky's Town Pike off of Bucky Town Pike. I don't know. No, that would be. That's like. That's the. I think it's that's the not the new Super Walmart. I think it's the old Super Walmart. Oh, Padme. Padme. No, it's not Padme. That's that's no. But it's, sorry, the old that's still existing Super Walmart. I think. No, no, no. The one that still exists. The one that's by the Coles and like Best Buy and stuff like that. There's no. I knew there was an Arby's. There's a Checkers there. There's No, you're right. There's not a Burger King there. I'm not sure where this came from, but an Indian restaurant, and it was. Is it not? Is it? It might be the Cotton Club, but it's called Burger King. Maybe it's called India India Six. Oh, it's. Okay. There you go. Yes, because that's where the Burger King is. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's there. No. So it's by yes, by the One Life South campus. So, all right, sorry, warm up. Oh boy, Mr. Wid, get on track here. We got things to do. Do we have any notes today? So, anyway, it was delicious shrimp. So, if you guys know Jenna Utter, maybe hit her up because might, she might have some left over. <laughs> Not physically, I mean, you know, like. Do we have notes today? We will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did make my pie. I didn't eat it yet, though. I also made a peanut raisin pie last night, too. Peanut raisin. It sounds weird, but it is delicious. At least I remember it being delicious when I had it years ago. Anyway, sorry, there's your warm up. Don't forget today is Main Street Madness. Dogs will be here. You'll get to color if you want to. Play some ping pong. Play some cornhole. Um, what else? Oh, there's uh, a turkey activity too. I think there's like make a turkey or something. There's some sort of Thanksgiving related activity. So very exciting. I'll be there at first lunch at least. You want to challenge me to some ping pong? I'll be happy to show you. Oh, there's, there's one, there's like one where it's like, like you have to, it gives you the correct answer. So <coughs> we'll go over the homework too. Okay, because I didn't know what to do. Like when you're, it gives you the graph. I didn't know what to do. Well, actually, you can use either one. Oh, so and in a case like that, you can use either one, but you have to adjust your um, adjust how adjust your setup based on like that. Um, sign. A way, one way to kind of easily identify is again, typically, when you're given the graph, uh, Rohan, when you're given the graph, you'll either see a graph that looks like this, or you'll see a graph that kind of starts <coughs> out above the axis and goes like this. This would be a cosine. More this is like an easier kind of cosine graph. This would be more typical of like a sine graph. Although, again, you can just shift things and then it'll match. But we haven't talked about shifting. If it starts at zero, it's most likely a sign. Correct. I would say if your, if your period starts at zero, then I would say use a sign. And if your period starts off the axis, then use a cosine. That's what I'd say. Right, sorry, did I see a hand over here? Yes. Um, Actually, let me, let me just do this real quick on the right there. <coughs> to stop the video from my last class. Reep, reep. <laughs>